Hey Tim, catch this. Got it! I got it! Got oh. it! I got it! Yes. Yeah, you may have guessed this video is all about pass through. As in hatches, decon chambers, autoclaves, and the like. Welcome. This week's video is about transfer disinfection. So let's uh, start the presentation. So transfer disinfection is about getting items from a lower grade clean room into a higher grade clean room. So on the slide here, we've got a straightforward representation of that. So we're transferring materials into the clean room and that begins when an operator opens the pass through, be that a decon chamber or a transfer hatch. And this is on the dirty air side. And then the items are either disinfected and placed in or there's an automated disinfection cycle. And then we have an interlock mechanism that um, automatically locks for a period of time um, until we've achieved the desired disinfection or flushing with grade A air. And we make sure we've got an airtight seal because we're using uh, special gaskets that prevent air loss from the clean room. And it's really important because if the air pressure drops, then we have the risk of the lower class air, the dirty air entering through and contaminating our materials. So transfer disinfection is common, but it's a process that carries risks. And we can conceptualize these risks are, well, if we've got the presence of viable microorganisms, particularly bacterial spores from the uh, less clean area on the outside of the materials, if this enters into the grade B and then into the grade A, then we're presenting a risk of contamination to our aseptically prepared products, and hence the potential for patient harm. It's also really important we've got the operating principle that the pass through is one way. So that's for clean materials to enter. And any waste never goes through the same route. You always have a separate route out for waste. So it's all about one best way practices. Where did that come from? Okay, so we also need to think about the different methods and we can conceptualize a hierarchy of controls using a uh, Joanna diagram and we put autoclaving at the top of the list as the most robust method of getting materials into an aseptic area since it's a form of sterilization and it's a penetrative method in that the heat goes all the way through the materials. Next on the list we have automated decontamination chambers and these work by um, having a gas cycle like hydrogen peroxide and they're more consistent in terms of applying the sporocidal agent in vapour form. Then we have dynamic pass-through hatches which have um, HEPA filtered air supply. We still need to manually disinfect the items but we can place them in whilst the contact time is running and flush, flush, flush with HEPA filtered air. Then we have static pass-through chambers with no air supply, and these are less efficient and are no longer state-of-the-art or recommended technology. And one thing that is not on the slide that we don't really want to have is people simply taking items through changing rooms. That's a big bad practice, not something that we particularly ever want to see. So the commonality with these methods, excluding the autoclave, is the application of sporocide. Now, sporocides are a special class of disinfectants and these can destroy bacterial endospores. And remember from previous videos, bacterial endospores are very difficult to kill. And we have this kind of walnut-like uh, analogy because we've got these three or four layers that we've got to crack through with the sporocidal agent. And similarly, we want an agent that's able to um, kill fungi as well. And there aren't many agents we can choose from. We either have chlorine, most likely chlorine dioxide, hydrogen peroxide, hypochlorous acid, or a combination of hydrogen peroxide and peracetic acid. In the vapour form, hydrogen peroxide 
is by far the most um, common. So we have these different methods. So let's have a quick look at the two key ones. So we've got biodecontamination chambers. So biodecontamination chambers have an air filtration system that uses HEPA filters and such systems are recirculatory and they're designed to make sure that we've got a grade A air supply environment with unidirectional airflow. And they're superior to manual disinfection because the biodecontamination process is automated. But the effectiveness of the hydrogen peroxide vapour depends upon getting the right concentration and an even distribution of the peroxide inside the chamber. So it's really important to get good circulation, which is why ideally for um, uh, good quality chambers all the items are hanging because we want to avoid occluded surfaces. And we assess this using chemical and biological indicators. And we're producing the hydrogen peroxide in situ with the chamber and we're producing that by flash evaporation. So basically liquid hydrogen peroxide hits a hot plate and boof vapour is generated and we can control the concentration um, through the uh, air supply which is passed through sterile compressed air and the key factors to control are temperature and humidity. Okay and then we have pass through hatches and these are used for multi-wrapped items, um, often like the items are sterile. So the important principle is that all items going into an aseptic area are triple wrapped so we can remove layers successively through different clean room grates. And we need to be particularly concerned because contamination can arise from the external environment and we can get surface cross-contamination by putting items onto a surface that's contaminated and also another big risk factor is from people particularly via fingerprints from gloved hands so lots and lots of hand sanitization when we're handling items to go into transfer hatches when we're doing the manual disinfection we want to use pre-saturated wipes and these are preferable to sort of spraying and then using dry wipes because the dry wipes are often not wetted enough to allow the correct release of the disinfectant. And then we need to wipe actively because we've got the aspect of physical removal, gets rid of some of the soil and a few microorganisms, and then we can get across all the surface to allow uh, sufficient contact time for the sporicidal disinfectant. And all of this combines to facilitate the destruction and the removal of contaminants and it's been proven that pressure is very effective for that process. So we have these different hierarchy of control measures so if we can autoclave something that's the optimal way to get into an aseptic area. If we can't autoclave it we should use a automated decontamination chamber and then if we can't use that then we have the pass-through hatch with the grade A HEPA filtered air supply and the reliance upon manual disinfection methods. But we should always try and do things in that particular order. Okay, well, thanks for watching the video. I'm Tim Sandal, and until next time, I'll be back with you with another video. And meanwhile, I can say, have a good day and good luck with the rest of your work shift. Cheery bye-bye.